Hey guys, welcome back to Curling Chronicles Playing in Ford. We're here with Team Dropkin. What's going on guys? How's it going? Okay guys, so uh, tell us about yourself uh, and how did you get into curling? Uh, I got into curling as a family sport for me. Uh, so when I was five years old, I started curling out of Brookstone's Curling Club. Uh, eventually moved to Duluth, Minnesota to pursue uh, curling and surround myself with some of the best and that's what brings us here today. You guys. Yeah, similar story for me. Uh, started curling when I was young. My dad did it, his father, my grandfather did it. So yeah, just kind of born into it. Almost a copy and paste for me as well. Family sport. Uh, grew up in New Jersey, not far from here. Out in Wisconsin now, met up with these boys and we're doing it. It's a family sport, whole team. Spent a lot of weekends watching the parents play. Looked fun, tried it out, stuck to it. So uh, how long have you guys been together as a team? And can you tell us about your curling journey? Yeah. So. Most of us, Corey, Tom, and myself have played together. It's our 10th or 11th season now. Um, we've had Andrew for a couple different times, probably three years total. But... What they don't want to tell you is that they had me like eight years ago and then they cut me. <laughs> <laughs> but they were nice enough to let me back. Yeah, yeah. Just a little while later. It's a series of tests. Yeah, oh, new yeah. pass. Yeah. Uh, and then Tommy and I actually have been curling together for probably like 16 or 17 seasons. So it's been a while. He's probably getting tired of me. Wow, long history. So, when and how did you know you were well as a team? Just trial and error. I mean, good group of guys that we uh, enjoyed curling together uh, and became, you know, very good friends. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of one of those things that you finally like curling with a group that has the similar uh, level of commitment and uh, discipline and sort of have the same goals. And then you kind of just keep moving forward. We've experienced a lot of highs and lows together as a team and that's formed a really strong bond and it allows us to work well out on the ice together. So how do you balance uh, work and curling? Uh, I'm go ahead on that one. It's, it's very difficult. Um, the biggest thing is having a support system behind you that allows you to do both. Uh, you know, um, we're not Full th we're full-time curlers, but we're not, you know, paid to be full-time curlers. But um, so it takes a lot of balance, a lot of support from family, friends, and our employers. So we're very thankful for that. Yeah, it's a heavy commitment, to, uh, um, you know, to pursue this passion that we have of trying to be the best. And you know, you miss out on a lot back home. You know, being around work, being around family, being around your good friends, and. And so it's, you know, there's uh, a cost to it, but you know, you find something that you want to do that means a lot to you and you kind of do what you have to do to you know, make your dreams come true. What personal characteristics do you think make a good teammate? Go ahead, Andrew. We talk a lot about like, uh, just trying to be like receptive to each other and, and, and accommodating and, and, and listen and hear and try to be communicative to each other. Um, I think it's easy sometimes to get frustrated and angry or even too high and you don't really communicate what you need to your teammates. So just remembering that there's you know, four of you on the ice and you all have to work together uh, to win and to be a good team. And I think something that you have to be good at too is flushing it down after everything leaves the ice. We do really well at kind of going and playing cards and you know doing some activities together and just kind of leaving that all there and then at the end of the day we know we got each other's back and we're friends off the ice so what's your favorite card game tom um go fish <laughs> i like war <laughs> <laughs> so uh do you have a warm-up team individually or as a team everybody kind of does their own thing it's pretty much as needed like a couple of us have hips that get pretty tight, you know, every once in a while the arms get a little sore. You think for a bunch of 20 somethings, mid to late 20s, we would not have as many injuries as we do, but I mean, look yeah. at look at all <laughs> race hand over here. So what do you think it takes for you as a team to get where you are today? Uh, just a lot of practice, uh, working together, getting a lot of reps in. Um, sort of being a sponge, watching as much curling as you can, watching the best play, and trying to learn, let, learn, and you know, listen to what they're doing and the strategy they're calling. Um, it takes a lot of mistakes, it takes losing a lot to you know finally get those you know those wins that you haven't gotten before, um, and then just you know learn and move on. Um, but definitely like a lot of uh, um, 
you know, continuing to like trial and error and uh, staying motivated to try to, to um, you know, trying to go accomplish what you want to accomplish in the game. We've had some pretty good people to learn the game from, like Andrew's dad's a pretty accomplished curler. I know myself, like I grew up watching. Yourself as an accomplished curler? No, I grew up watching. <laughs> you you know, you know, yeah, I, I watch myself. <laughs> <laughs> watching a lot of competitive curling, so I think that helps a lot. You can learn the game really fast that way. And what is the most important skill to get right for the positions that you guys play? I'd say the mental part of the game is probably what's helped me, you know, take my game to the next level that at this and here. So yeah. I would agree with that. I think it's probably eighty or ninety percent mental after you get to a certain yeah. point. It's just that's something that we work hard on with our sports psychologist, with our team, with our coach. Um, yeah, like that's another component that I, I don't think a lot of people always think about is that uh, you have to work on the mental side as well. We got well said. So tell us about team practice or training or workouts. Practice, training, or workouts. Well, I think we each sort of do our own thing for practice, like. Mark and Andrew, they, they live together, they're in the city, so they, they, you know, they work out and practice together typically, I think. Uh, Tom and I are kind of both on our own islands in a way. He's in Milwaukee, I'm in Duluth. Uh, so we kind of have our own practice routines, getting the reps in. Um, you know, I usually try to practice um, you know, myself a couple times a week, as well as with uh, my mixed doubles partner, Corey, and at least having someone hold the broom. We had a, friend, a couple friends back home too that you know they'll they'll uh, you know help me out holding a broom because it's always nice to have someone to give you feedback. Um, but you know we work out I'd say four or five times a week, give or take during this you know off season and the season. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our, our basic routines there. When we, when we come into an event like this, like Cooch, what do we do when we come to an event like this for a pre pre event practice? Pre event practice, we're really just trying to make sure we get the rocks matched up similar if we find any ones that are doing something funky and make sure we know what's going on get the most out of them yeah so how do you stay focused and motivated during the game and when you're down points how do you stay uh, what is your mindset if you're down yeah that's a great question that's something we work a, a lot on it probably took us a long time to learn is patience we say that word out there a lot is just remember to be patient because the game's long and you know your groove sometimes in the middle of a game comes and goes so if we exercise our patience then um, we know we can we can get it back so you know I don't know a, a specific mindset other than we remind ourselves constantly okay good patience there let's remember to be patient and we'll we'll figure it out try and stick to the process as best as you can like you can't really control what the other team is making shots missing shots so you just got to do what you can to put yourself in a good position so how do you prepare for big games or shots? Um, well, it's funny, they actually just mentioned, mentioned focusing on the process. And when it comes to like preparing for big shots, I mean, you've thrown the shot a million times before in practice, whether it's yeah. practice or in other games. Um, and you kind of just have a pre-shot routine that you that you do before you throw every shot, even whether it's practice or a game. So kind of just sticking with that, you know, making sure you're taking your breath. Uh, work on your breathing and, and just focusing on the process of making that shot versus letting your mind maybe drift to like seeing like you know the you know making the shot or what happens if I make it or miss it you know more so just doing what you got to do to throw this rock as best as you can. Um, it's funny because one of my our coach always says it's, it's a simple game just you know hit the broom and throw the right way. Yeah. So <clears throat> when it comes to you know getting ready for the game you know we each have our own warm-up that we kind of described a little bit earlier but everyone kind of has what differences in what they do and you know whether it's physical preparation or mental preparation for the game some people like to listen to music some people like to chat uh to help keep them loose um and not really focus too much on the moment but more so just on enjoying the moment and having fun the worst part is when you hit the weight and the broom and you still don't make the shot. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, then you just, then you just go, why am I playing this sport? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so how do you talk as a team at, um, after wins or losses? It's been well, after, after losses, we don't talk as a team for a couple minutes. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. We spend a little time with our coach, make sure we take away what we did well after a game. Try and analyze the ice, make sure we have a good handle on that in case we come back to that sheet. 
I think it's like really easy after we, like after you lose games, it's easy to go through and be like, okay, what do we need to do to be better? But also when you win games, you have to do the same thing and review, you know, what went well out there? How did we do that? How did we make that happen? And how can we get better? So we're always talking with our coach and amongst ourselves, whether that be after a game or maybe over a meal a little bit later or before our next game of how can we improve out there? And I think we are improving every game. At least you hope to be improving every game. I'll let you know at the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs> so, who has been the toughest opponent you've played and what? How about this? In the US or just around the world? <laughs> around the world. Italy. Yeah, I'd say yeah, Joel Retornas has kind of been our toughest obstacle to get around. I think we've played them like three or four times and uh, we've never made it to the last rock of the game. So. Um, just to be brutally honest. Can we, can we block this video in Italy though, so they don't see this? <laughs> but yeah, they're such a good team and they've come so, you know, they've come to be, you know, just sharpshooters. They don't miss much. They don't make it easy on any team nowadays. So, and you know, they got, you know, they got those guys in the middle that are such great sweepers. It's, it's, they make it look so easy. Now what's a moment um, in all of your guys' careers that you're most proud of? For each one of us. Yeah. Go ahead, Scooch. You want me to go? I think, yeah, I, I, don't know. I think one of the most memorable moments I've had on the ice um, was trying to win our first juniors back in 2017. Um, kind of like we talked about earlier, like we've all done a lot of losing to get to where we are now and learning from losing. So to kind of like get over that hump for the first time and to make such a great team shot to do it was really special. and. I think, you know, trying to find that moment like that ever since. I give you guys time. Come on. Um, wow. Uh, maybe to be a little cheesy, it's maybe it's right now uh, because the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years have been, it almost feels like a blur, you know, competing, traveling so much, playing in all these big tournaments. And at some point they all mash together. And I think, new perspective is kind of it's it's been going fast and I want to try and slow time down and go you know day by day game by game and so maybe maybe it's right now I think my most memory I would probably go back to the first game of the trials final a couple of years ago where we were just locked in curling up and down the lineup taking tons of shots high energy it's just really fun to play Mine's, mine's definitely in mixed doubles worlds last year in April. Just winning a world championship and putting the gold medal around your neck. Um, and just in general, putting together a great week of curling at such a, a big event. Um, you know, you go and like the two mixed doubles worlds before that, you know, not playing great. And then finally putting together a full week of great curling and, and you know, experiencing that with my mom in the stands, being able to watch the game and, and you know, give her a big hug afterwards. That uh, was a pretty special moment. So what's some tips to make it from like the make it to national level to like the very top? <laughs> Just keep trying, keep keep putting in the reps, watch a lot of great curling. Uh, watch the best in the US, the best in the world, try to gain as much, soak in as much information as you can. And uh, you know, don't stop. Keep going. Work hard as work as hard as you can. Yeah, you kinda never know when it's gonna happen for you exactly. Like, I think, you know, people kind of break out in their own way at different times and just putting in that effort, that 100% effort every day, uh, day in and day out, and it should come to you. I mean, I think, you know, some people out there maybe didn't get their break until they were 21 or into their 20s, whereas, you know, other ones, other of us uh, got it a little bit earlier, but just keep working hard and, and it'll come. I think it helps having teammates with similar goals as well. We've all been pretty fortunate to play with a lot of good curlers who have the same aspirations as us, and that just keeps pushing each one here to be better. Yeah, that, I think it's important to not be afraid to lose. I think all of us here have lost a lot of big games, and we've grown from it. So if it's your dream, go for it. Don't be afraid to, to leave anything behind. And sometimes you got to learn. you got to lose to learn. So, um, yeah. So, uh, 
what is your advice for new young or young curlers? I would say practice a lot. Um, find somebody who knows the game pretty well and can make sure you're doing it the right way. Have fun. Just have fun with it. Have fun with your friends. If it's a dream of yours, go for it. Yeah, I think like it's really easy to get caught up in the moment and not enjoy it. Um, and I think that's something we work on. But I think as a, as a young curler, like do it because you love it. And, you know, don't necessarily give up everything else for it. But uh, go out and have fun there. At the time frame when you have, you know, the most passion for the sport, not to say that we don't have passion for the sport now, but that's like when you learn you know, you build the love for the game is when you're early into the sport and that's, you know, when everything else comes through and follows from there. Like, have fun and, and make some good friends in the community. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking the time to be here and do this. Absolutely, yeah, thank, thank you very guys. much for having thank us. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. All right.